Stripes help zebras avoid having horse flies land on them and bite them. And scientists have figured this out by dressing up horses and donkeys in some really fancy clothes. But is that the reason that zebras have stripes? Don't be so sure. About seven or eight years ago, I made a video for another channel about why zebras have stripes. I think it was a pretty good video, but it does have one problem and it's a common one when it comes to this issue, which is that I was looking for that one single reason that zebras have stripes. And if you look back, you find that like every few years, the time science section is led by some article with a big headline that says, why do zebras have stripes? Now we know. And that article with basically that headline has appeared like once every few years for a couple decades. And that's because people are interested in why zebras have stripes. And the definitive answer keeps changing because it's very hard to come to. And I think our group thinks a little differently about this whole question. It's not just me and newspaper science sections that get this wrong. People have been arguing about why zebras have stripes since the time of Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin himself had theories for why zebras have stripes. But Richard Gersick and his colleagues at Princeton that study zebra stripes told me that they think that the way we think about it might be the problem, that we're looking for one reason. Now, there are scientists that do think there might be one reason that zebras have stripes, but to the Princeton group, they think it might not be so black and white. Yeah, we don't believe that there's one unitary explanation. We believe that there's multiple selective forces operating. Some groups prefer one explanation, a unitary explanation. Selection works on one dimension. We don't believe it has to. There's support for the idea of multiple forces operating simultaneously. Over the centuries, lots of theories have been tossed around about why zebras have stripes. Some have been tossed out and others have shown more promise. One theory, for example, is that the stripes help the zebras with social cohesion and maybe even social hierarchy. The way this theory goes is that the stripes help the zebras want to rub each other, which creates important social bonds or that the stripier the zebra, the higher they might be in the social hierarchy. But this theory doesn't necessarily hold water. But in the sense of social cohesion, um, there's really not a lot of support for it. On Mount Kenya, for example, there are white zebras mixed in with striped zebras. And sometimes the stallion that leads the group, which means someone who's very reproductively active, is white. So they're not being shunned or selected against. Another theory, camouflage. Now, all joking aside about zebras being really easy to spot, the idea was that for animals that can't see as much color, the stripes would blend in with the verticals of trees and saplings and things like that. But zebras are often out in the open. And also scientists have used models to test things like the vision of lions and hyenas and they can see them. But there's another kind of camouflage, something called dazzle confusion, and that one might stick. We have some evidence from human visual systems that striped objects, especially moving against striped backgrounds or moving in tandem with other striped objects, are especially hard to sort of see the outline of the perimeter of the object and to trace and therefore predict its trajectory as it moves through space. So predators are going to be trying to track and accurately predict their trajectory because it's costly 
to put all the energy into catching a fast moving prey animal and take a strike. And if you, if you miss, then you might lose your chance at capturing that animal. The main argument against this has been, well, lions still eat zebras. In fact, zebras are lions' favorite food. But the dazzle effect doesn't have to work 100% of the time to be effective. Our idea has been that if there is any differential in the likelihood that a zebra escapes or that a strike is less on target than it would have been based on some visual effect of stripes, then that is potentially enough to say this is, this is a trait shaped by natural selection that's conferring a survival advantage. The Princeton scientists have done some really cool upcoming experiments where they're starting to show that the dazzle effect may work. Details TBD. Another theory is one I talked about in my video from way back when, and it's the idea that the stripes help zebras with temperature regulation. Since black absorbs heat and white reflects heat, if you have uh, you know, a black stripe right next to a white stripe, the air should heat up above the black stripe and rise, and then the air from uh, next door um, should come and replace it because of the vacuum. And then if you have alternating black and white and black and white stripes, it should create little vortices, which could act as little fans that help offload heat. That kind of effect should be there. What we don't know is if it's strong enough to actually offload heat in the wild. And zebras need to cool off more because they have to be out grazing more than other animals. Basically, zebras don't get as much nutrition from the food they eat as other grass eaters like giraffes or buffalo, and that's because they don't chew their cud. Those other animals vomit the food back up, chew it some more, digest it some more, and they do this continuously. But horses and zebras don't do that. So they eat it once and they get the nutrients they get. And they need a lot more nutrients as a result. So zebras have to spend a lot more time grazing up to 16 hours a day. But here's the rub. Some studies on temperature regulation have shown that it's not effective enough to keep the zebras cool. But Dr. Rubenstein thinks that there might be another reason that this happens. We paint the donkeys white and then put black stripes on the white. Those that were striped compared to those with normal beige color or those that were spray painted clear, the body temperature, internal body temperature, was about one and a half degrees Fahrenheit cooler. So there is a cooling effect. And so what I think now happens is that the biting flies, although they're being reduced in number, most of the zebras have the parasite that leads to African sleeping sickness. And a way to modulate that, so you want to heat up, knock it back, change your body orientation to cool it down. So we think now that they're using thermoregulation to moderate temperature, not just purely to cool. Which brings us to horse flies. This is touted as the reason that zebras have stripes right now. And that's because scientists can show that it's real. Zebras have fewer biting flies and horse flies on them than other grazers that don't have stripes. This is really important for the zebras because they have shorter hair so the flies can bite them more easily. To study if and how this works, scientists started draping horses and donkeys in black and white fabrics, in stripes, but also checkerboards, triangles, random pixelated spots, and even a black and white tree camo pattern. They also used a plain gray coat as something to compare to. The stripe patterns work just like they do on the zebras, but scientists aren't totally sure how it works on the horse flies. Here's the idea right now. When a horse fly is far away from a zebra, it can smell it, and the black and white of the zebra's coat 
blends together to look like gray. But as the fly gets closer, the stripes come into view. And because of how horse flies eyes work, instead of slowing down to make a landing to start sucking on the zebra's blood, the flies don't slow down. They don't land and they don't have as much success getting to the blood inside. This theory holds up and stripes hold back flies. But this is where things get crazy interesting. That may be a reason that zebras kept their stripes, but the flies and the dazzling and the temperature stuff, that may not be the reason that they developed the stripes. The Princeton scientists explained this to me. See, before they evolved into zebras, the ancestors of zebras had some evolutionary pressures that led to them developing stripes. Those pressures might have been some of the benefits that the zebras get from the stripes today, fending off horse flies, for example. But some of the other problems that stripes solved may have just stayed solved. In the past, for instance, there may have been a bunch of different horse-like species in the savanna, and stripes helped the zebras be the ones to survive. The idea that there could be a species recognition or a social cohesion effect of stripes that implicates a, a landscape that no longer exists, where you had a profusion of potentially similar looking equid species in a prior era, and there might have it might have been the case that a prior version of this trait, a less refined version of this trait, could have been helpful for making sure you don't mate with the wrong equid. It's a lot harder to find evidence in the present day, mechanistic evidence for something like that, which does not mean that something like that might not have contributed in the, in the evolutionary past. Like I said, the reason that zebras have stripes may not be so neat and tidy. And all this stripe mystery is why the Princeton scientists have called zebra stripes the ideal evolutionary puzzle. Part of the reason why this is such a fun question, both for your scientists and for the public to think about, is that there are so many different things that could be contributing to this trait. I mean, it, it's complicated, but it's also very fun because you can think about how this might work and think about the biology of how it might work, um, the physics of how it might work. It draws in so many different fields of science. You, you can just go at it for your whole life if you want to, because there are so many different branches that it can take you down. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here next month for another adventure in the natural world.